Hey guys, thanks for having me. Yeah, appreciate me jumping on the show and um, having a chat to you guys today about uh, all things training, racing and, and life. No, absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on and, and chat with us today. We're so excited. So I guess we'll jump straight into it. Tell us who you are and what you do. Yeah, so I'm uh, Lee McKenzie. For the guys that do not know me, I'm 34 years old, uh, just south of the Gold Coast in a little town called Yukai. Um, very small population town, but we're surrounded by um, national parks and, and big mountains. So uh, it's a perfect training ground um, for us to yeah train and, and also a um, great place to raise our daughter as well. So I guess my background um, it has been in athletics uh, from a pretty young age of 15 years old, um, more so competing at the, the track and then moved into cross country. Um, and then over the years, I guess, of diversified some skills through gymnastics, rock climbing, um, and trail running, which has uh, led me into um, obstacle course racing in um, 2017. So that's where the journey started. And um, yeah, we're still going. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, you've given us a big background as far as your athletic capability and, and getting involved into Spartan. So sky running and Spartan itself. I mean, what, what, what do you think is inspiring you the most that actually keeps you coming back to Spartan race? Um, I think it's always the, uh, it's like the competition's great. Um, especially in Australia, um, we've got, we've got a, a very top tier, um, number of athletes that is, is great to, um, battle out on course. And I think, um, the terrain that we have in Australia is awesome as well. So a lot of the time we get to race in, um, mountainous terrains, which, uh, is, yeah, I guess my background, um, from trail running. So anything that has a little bit of elevation, a um, little bit nasty underfoot uh, is always always a challenge and always um, something that kind of keeps drawing me back to, to getting out and, and racing in Spartan. Fantastic. So would you say that, that that vertical climb is something that actually pushes you? Yeah, it definitely, definitely has its challenges. Um, there's definitely been yeah unforeseen injuries through training and racing and stuff. Um, that kind of comes with uh the the sport but it's um i guess it's how you yeah adapt from that um and how you rebuild yourself to to get out there and and um conquer those those races um yeah unfortunately i had my first i'd, I'd probably say um injury um in in a full season last year um and it was something as small as a cut uh, a cut and and a knee injury actually but uh it was towards the end of my um my year so that was um, quite challenging for me because um I'm, I'm an athlete that likes to prepare a lot uh rock up in in as close as 100 percent um fitness and health as possible um but yeah unfortunately i had my first taste of it uh, last year, but I think it, yeah, it, it just, if anything, it made me stronger. Um, I learned a few things from it as well, um, which I'll be putting into 2024. Excellent. So Liam, um, everyone has a, a different approach to the day. You start off the day, what gets you up in the morning? What, what gets you pumping? Um, I'll be honest, like it doesn't, it doesn't take much for me. I, I, I love the outdoors. Um, like I mentioned before, we moved to a little mountainous town and we're surrounded by a thousand meter peaks just straight out our window. So uh, for me, when I wake up in the morning and, and get a first glimpse of that, it's um, it's not so much uh, where's the motivation. It's it's kind of pull the motivation back a little bit just, <laughs> just so I'm, I'm uh, keeping it within check. So um, yeah, big, big draw to, to nature. Like I don't run with any music. I, I really enjoy just listening to um, all the sounds, the birds, the, the rustling in the bush, whether it be a snake or goanna or anything along those lines, you, you become quite uh, accustomed to that living up here. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just yeah, the endorphins you get from it. And also, yeah, it's just something that uh, really helps mentally as well to get out there and and kind of solve those those um, issues you might be having for the day or the week, and and kind of reset and and realize, um, yeah, why 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 you do that, and and feel pretty lucky to get to do that on a daily basis as well. So oh, that's cool. And look, I mean, I, I follow you on social media, and I see you out there running in in your local area, but I also see you down in New Zealand. A lot of this is around your your company, McKenzie Method. So tell us a little bit about the McKenzie Method. Yeah, so the McKenzie Method started um, about four years ago, I'm obviously still heavily involved in Spartan, but I, I guess I saw that point in the market of obstacle course racing where there was a lot of people uh, that would, there's so many different ways you can train for an obstacle course race, which is, um, which is amazing. But I think the gap I saw it was a lot of people were focusing, I guess, more so on the, the obstacles and, and less on the running and coming from a running background. Um, I decided and saw that I could help a lot of people out with their running. Um, 
So we started, yeah, four years ago, started very small, just had a small select um, number of athletes um, from all different fitness abilities. So we weren't targeting elite athletes. We weren't targeting anyone in particular. We had, we've had people ranging from uh, the ages of 20 up to 60. Um, and we just thought, yeah, we'd be able to help them out with their running and ob obviously get them ready for their next obstacle course race with um, the experience we had at the time. And um, that's just evolved from the years into, yeah, a, a solid base of 50 plus athletes um, now ranging from elite athletes to everyday get off your couch athletes, um, first race athletes. And um, yeah, over the years we've, um, we've held training camps, like you mentioned before, um, we got, recently got back from New Zealand uh, the week just before Bright. So it was a, it was a quick flight from New Zealand to Bright. I guess it, it kind of comes hand in hand um, coming from a, a mountainous um, place like New Zealand in, into Bright. So um, it's one of those things that keeps adapting. We, ke uh, we keep learning um, along the way and um, we keep growing as well, which is really exciting. So, um, and that's, yeah, quite, quite the long answer to it, but um, yeah, getting to see people, um, I guess, progress um, from where they started to, to, to where they're currently at and, and how far they've still got to grow in their journeys is, is kind of why we do it. It also allows us to yeah, train from a semi-professional um, side of things as well and, and um, yeah, do something you, you love daily as well. well that's fantastic I mean, but, but coming out of that camp that you had in new zealand you had as you said you had one week before bright and you podium at, at every every single race that you had at bright so how did the recovery work for that week and making sure you're coming off of that camp and, and then <laughs> actually have, having the podium finishes at bright i think that's excellent but tell us how, how did you do that yeah so um i guess over the years as well like uh you learn as an athlete that it's not just about the running it's not just about the competing it's about um so much more than that and that's the the nutrition that's the sleep that's the keeping the stress levels down um and i'm implementing new things each year as well um i'm not gonna lie it was a massive challenge probably one of the biggest challenges i've had um trying to turn around that quickly um basically finishing that sunday um with 20 hours on the feet in New Zealand and 120 plus kilometers with uh, the heart of Everest. So my, my legs were tired, um, the calves were tired and I was going into a mountainous um, race and um, that in itself had its challenges. And um, I do like to think I've got a very strong uh, mental uh, capacity um, to deal with a lot of things, but um, I, I learned a lesson on the, on the first race and um, it, I basically I'll, I'll tell the story, but finished the, the race off on Saturday, the beast, which was a challenging beast and went back, looked at data and I guess like being competitive, you always want to win. So if you're not winning, you, you look back on the things you could have done better and uh, came back after that race and, and reflected through my race and realized that I'd actually counted myself out um, in a certain part of the race. Um, whereas if I'd kind of stayed in that fight um, and it was the downhill coming down from the top of the spot mountain in, in um, bright there that that i potentially would have won that race so um on reflecting on that um changed my mentality for the next day of yes my legs are tired yes i am a little bit tired but hey i'm, I'm here to win so let's let's give absolutely everything we can for um for the first race of the sunday and um yeah reflecting back on it um over seven years of racing it's it's definitely the closest and the hardest i've kind of had to push um myself and learn to a lot of good things out of that as well in terms of um just make sure you yeah you back yourself if you've done the work um give it everything and and yeah that's all you can do um give it everything and i felt like i didn't quite do that on sunday but that's excellent advice i mean i i i look at the data from when i run um i try to watch my nutrition would be nowhere in a competition with you but i think that's really good advice to give our listeners is that if they do analyze the data they do focus on recovery they focus on diet it's not just getting out there and running every day it's got to be a holistic method and with the mckinsey method i'm you know I, i'm assuming that's things that you actually are working with with the participants in the mckinsey method yeah absolutely we we, we make sure they're going through their mobility um per week so two to three sessions of mobility um, we're obviously big advocates for hot and cold therapy, which we've been doing, um, yeah, since, since we've really been in the Spartan scene. So we've, we've got the ice bath set up, we've got the sauna at home and, um, we are making sure that our athletes are doing that as well. So it's the accountability of not just the running and the strength side of things. It's like, Hey, are you recovering properly? And we can see those metrics as well, um, through our online coaching and 
how their average heart rate is, how much sleep they're getting per night. It's like you, you've summed it up quite well. It's a holistic approach. You could you could be training the hardest out of anyone um, on race day, but not looking after your body with your, your sleep and your nutrition. And um, that might be that extra 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 15 seconds in the elite side of things or the difference between um, putting out your best performance for the day over over any, um, any race uh, from open up to uh, elite. Absolutely. And we saw that in Bright. I mean, with the finishes, there was literally 15, 20 seconds in some of the placements. So that's fantastic. Um, look, Liam, you talked a little bit about your injury from last year, but you also told me earlier that your goal for this year was to become the APAC champion. So tell us a little bit about how you're building up to becoming the APAC champion this year. Yeah. So I guess when I set out in this sport, you, you've got your own goals. Um, and my goal from the start of, start of starting Spartan was I want to win every distance um ranging from a, a 5k through to a stadium race through to the 50k so over my time of training and racing um i actually achieved that last year which was a massive goal of mine um but the one thing that was left off that that board was that third title for the apac championship so um i put myself in great contention for training for the year and um, unfortunately had a big fall uh, in a trial race um, in September, uh, which I did some ligament damage in my knee, and then I cut my foot open a few days before the Fiji race. So uh, it might have been a sign of the universe saying I was trying to do a little bit too much, but it um, it kind of kept me out uh, from from heading over to Thailand to compete for that third title, um, which was very hard. Like looking looking and watching that race and not having that opportunity uh, to be there was was a tough mental process for me, um, but. Once it got announced that uh, APAC was going to be in Australia, it felt like uh, another universe giving me another chance for it as well. And um, it's 30 minutes from my home, so bring it on. <laughs> Excellent. No, it's so wonderful to hear about what you do, not only just as an athlete yourself, but what you're doing to help prepare other people in the safest and healthiest way possible as well, which is such an important part of it as well as I think that the time and consideration both physically and mentally that goes into not only training yourself but training up to to 50 athletes and I myself will be attending and competing in my first Spartan race in June of this year in Queensland awesome. what advice would you give to someone like me who fitness is not my thing but what advice would you give to kind of really I guess get that kick started to get me to a sustainable place for you know in three months time yeah, firstly, it's just starting your journey. So start that journey as soon as you can. Um, take those small steps, whether it, it be going out and going for a walk, going for a hike. You, you, you might be able to find yourself in, in, a, in a situation that you haven't been before and, and grow from that as well. So if you, yeah, just basically start the journey today. Everyone's at different fitness um, levels. Um, anyone that ever asked me about an obstacle course race, um, like they see the highlights and stuff like that and they're like, oh, that looks really hard. Um, I, I, I don't do that in training. And um, I think one of the most amazing things about um, Spartan Race is you see people from all different um, levels, people that haven't run a 5K before. And um, I guess the way that it's it's um, designed is you, you do get that opportunity between um, obstacles where you are, yeah, you're able, you got a chance to get your breath back. You are able to go out with some friends. It's not, it's not like a, a competitive race for everyone. You might get to that point in your OCR time, but um, just grab a couple of friends, go out for a walk, go out for a hike together. You guys can do a little bit of training. Um, if it's solo, just, yeah, start with those goals small and be like, hey, I want it three times this week. I want to get out the door and, and do let's say two kilometers um, each time and something as small as that before you know it, you're, you're, you're doing yeah, 10, 15, 20 kilometers and you're, you're well ahead of where you would have been if you, if you try to cram it in two weeks out from the race. But yeah, just, just, just start today, just start small. I think, I think something that people um, do is they, they try to get straight into it and, and go a little bit too fast, a little bit too um, quick with it all as well. So just start small, go for a walk, go for a hike before you know it to stay consistent and, and you'll, you'll be uh, standing at the start line, um, but I'm sure won't be your, um, your last race. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's definitely, it's intimidating when you do, you see the videos and you're like, it looks like so much fun and such a great challenge, but it is intimidating because you're like, mm. oh, like that's, I've got to like, I've got to get myself out there and I've got to do that. But I think it, it is, it's such fantastic advice. I think just in life in general, you do just have to start. And starting yep. is the hardest part. But once you kind of 
start and kind of get the ball rolling, even if it's just really small steps like you said just going for a little walk or going for yeah, a hike honestly. something that you can yeah. enjoy as well yeah yeah just t- just take the pressure off i think a lot of people like that's where um it, it becomes stressful it's like you put a lot of pressure on yourself and and you see what other people are doing don't ever compare yourself to anyone else it's like we're all on different fitness journeys and um yours might be starting just uh, now um after this podcast so um towards to, towards getting ready for your, your race in um on the Gold Coast, so there's 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 nothing really. Um, yeah, it's hard to give advice um, apart from just just start now and and um, start small. And that's outstanding. Hey, well, look, um, Liam, we've we've learned a lot about you, but I think you know, take a time now. What, give us a, a a bit of a social plug. So, Instagram handle. How do we find some information about McKenzie Method? Yeah. Um, so like I mentioned, there's, there's no, like, we're not solely training elite athletes. We're not solely training competitive athletes. Um, it's just about starting your journey. So, um, it's personalized programming. There's no one set program. We haven't figured out the perfect program for everyone. It's, uh, it's a, it's a chat, um, similar to this. We get to know you, we get to know what your goals are, where you're at. And, um, we just get the, the journey started, um, when you guys are ready. Um, we have uh, catch ups as well, uh, where we'll catch up um, on a Zoom chat and to see how you're going. And um, it's personalized programming. So you might have tough weeks at work where we have a bit of a down week. You might have a week where you've got more time. So again, there's no set program. We've got social handles as well with the McKenzie method. Um, so just have a look on Instagram for that, um, where we run like a, a, a group um, chat as well, where we put up um, information um, for our community of races coming up. We put up, um, we hold events so outside of um, obstacle course racing and trail running where we'll, we might hold a five kilometer track night where we set up um, pacing for people to achieve those PBs. We had one a couple of months ago on the on the Gold Coast and I, I fortunately had the job of pacing four races. So um, basically went back to back um, to get uh, 90% of our athletes to PB, um, 7.30 on a night in a, on a very warm Gold Coast um, evening. Um, so yeah, we're, we're constantly just, yeah, like helping out our community and outside of that as well, like we do get a lot of messages as well. That, hey, we've got a race coming up and we're happy to share some information like that as well. And yeah, just, just send us a message to get started on there and um, also have a yeah, personal page as well, um, Liam McKenzie, where you guys can um, see some of the stuff I get up to um, in my spare time. Well, that's fantastic. Look, well, Liam, look, I really, I really appreciate all of your insight today. I appreciate learning a little bit more about yourself, McKenzie Method, um, what you're doing for the sport, uh, what you do for Spartan and all of the competitors. To me, I think it's very inspiring. It's good to see you up on the podium. It's good to see you interacting with all of our rookies and, and everyone else out that, that's out at the event. So I want to thank you for everything that you're doing for Spartan. I want to thank you for your time today. Um, also take a time just to thank all of our listeners to stay staying in touch with this episode and future episodes going forward. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me guys. And um, yeah, anyone listening, if you, if you need any tips, um, if you've got any questions about races coming up or um, even starting your journey, um, just to send me a message and happy to help out. Hi warriors. Welcome to, this is the debrief. So we're debriefing the lovely chat that we just had with Liam and kind of chatting about what we took from that um, interview and what we learned. I don't know. I think for me, one of one of the big things that I loved and because it can, and like I said in the episode, it feels so intimidating, is starting the process of, of training and to, as Liam said, to just start and to start small, which is allowed. Um, obviously, something that came up in this episode that also comes up in our inaugural episode. I originally said that I was going to be running my first Spartan race uh, in April at Picton. That has since changed and I will now be running my first race in June in Queensland. Um, <laughs> for a myriad of reasons. One of them is to do with my health, um, but also just being prepared. I do not feel like I have given myself enough time to prepare mentally and physically um, to race in April because it's less than a month away now. Um, And by the time this comes out, I think it will be this coming weekend. Um, (laughs) So I will still be attending Picton Spartan on the Sunday to support um, and do some stuff possibly for the podcast, uh, but I will not be racing. But I think what Liam said is, I think was really important for me to hear personally, and I hope for our listeners as well, is to just start and to start small, to take small steps. Don't feel like it's this big, massive 
undertaking all at once um, because it can feel like that. And I know for me as a first time racer, it feels huge. It feels like this big, really scary thing. Um, and mentally as well, that's a big thing that's kind of stopped me from starting that process of preparing. Um, but since then I have gone, okay, cool. I do just need to take a breath, take a step back and just start walking. Just start walking. Don't think about the big, scary obstacles or anything yet. Um, which is something that I really, I think, took on board from what Liam had to say. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And I mean, in, in, in the podcast, he talked about getting out first and just starting to walk and, and getting through that, starting it small and getting big. And I, I think if you you see Liam race, you can see that he gives 100%. He leaves everything out on the course. And it doesn't matter if you're an elite racer, or you're a rookie, you're a spectator. You can see the drive and, and, the, and the enthusiasm that he has in every single race. Um, and I take it to heart. I think that, you know, even what you said about the, the race and, and you moving from racing at Picton to going up to the Gold Coast, to me, it's the right thing. Um, it, it comes into a couple of the podcast episodes that we've already done. It's about making sure that you're not just physically ready, but that you're mentally ready. And, and if you're not mentally ready, I feel that that you've actually already underdone yourself. You've put yourself in a position that in your mind, you're not going to be successful. You're not going to be able to achieve the goals that you have had. So that mental resilience, that mental toughness, that mental stability is much, much more important. Uh, don't get me wrong. You need to be physically ready. So it's, as Liam said, starting small, building those goals, getting up there. Um, but encouraging yourself to actually make it through that gets you mentally ready for that event as well. So it doesn't matter if you're doing a sprint, a super or a beast, getting out there, physically being ready and mentally being ready. Liam, I thought was, to me, he's charismatic. He can drive people. Having this McKinsey method and getting people out and all of the, train, the training that he's doing, to me, is just fabulous as well because he's helping so many people. So that's something else I got out of the, out of the, the episode with Liam is just that it's not just about running a business. It's about helping people. And I think he, yeah. he really gets a lot of benefit of that himself personally about just be able to give back to the people that he's working with. And I think that's fantastic. No, I couldn't agree more. I think that it is. And you would learn so much as well yourself having that, that coaching experience, you know, because you're also learning from the participants of the program as well. And something that I think I really got out of the conversation with Liam as well was the holistic approach to yeah. training is that it's it's not just about like you were saying it's not just about the physical it's also about the mental it's also about how much you're sleeping what you're eating because what you're eating fuels your body um and also you know it fuels how tired you are how much energy you have you know how much water do you drink in the day like things that I think you don't often think about as being important you kind of just and this is definitely how I initially was thinking about it was just okay I have to be able to walk slash run slash jog 5ks and be able to do the obstacles that's the only thing that matters um and it's absolutely not the only thing that matters um it's the mentality of I think doing it as well and trying to not psych myself out from doing it kind of being like my main goal is getting to the start line being yeah. there on the day and just trying to have a good time with it as well, I think is, is, is so, so important because why would you do something if you don't actually enjoy doing it? Like nobody's forcing me to do this. I promise I'm not being forced to do this. I yeah. want to do this and I want to challenge myself to do this. Um, and I want to enjoy doing it as well. Um, but that's definitely something that I didn't take into account. Like I know I do not drink enough water. Um, so then when I am working out or going for a walk, you know, these, all these little things, are part of the whole of preparing. So I think that's something that I really took to heart. Yeah. Well, I can't wait until after we finish the Gold Coast race and we're able to get you back onto the podcast and, and hear your views of one, you know, how did you feel before? How did you feel during uh, the sprint? And then how did you feel after? And if it's anything else, like a lot of the people that we've had come out, it's this exhilaration and I'm ready to take on the next race. I just feel that I've just conquered the world. But rather than putting that, I, I, I cannot wait to hear how you, how you come out of that. And if we, if we can get anything from that, reconciling back to the podcast with Liam, it's about setting goals. 
So between now and your event, it's about establishing goals, getting out there, starting to walk, starting to jog, starting to run, and getting those many goals established and actually help you get to the goal of actually getting on the starting line and competing and, and completing your first sprint. Yeah, absolutely. I'm very excited. I'm very excited to just to get there, I think is going to be a big um, thing in and of itself. Um, so I'm very excited to see how I get there and the result after. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. But look, I think it was great to get Liam on board um, and, and looking forward to getting some other athletes as, as Liam and, and some other people out onto the podcast, just so our listeners can, can, can get more information, get themselves mentally and physically ready for, for whatever they're, they're trying to tackle in life. Absolutely. Just you wait, you guys. We have some fantastic people lined up, but unfortunately, you will have to wait until the next episode to see who they are. Yeah.